You're watching World Insight, our special program, Way Into Sessions. Coming up, China-U.S. ties tested by the COVID-19 pandemic. Are we going to see cooperation between the two giants? Dr. Oh, Chen Li no. from the Brookings I, I, Institution uh, weighs in. Dragging. You're watching Way Into Sessions, our special program for the two sessions of this year's China's annual political season. As China enters another political season, relations between China and the United States are drawing more attention than ever. The two have not been working well together in squaring off with the COVID-19. And now, with the impact of the pandemic on the economy gathering steam, hostility, some say, between the two has become more damaging to both. How should Beijing and Washington work around these agreements and try to find out common interests? I talked to Dr. Chen Li, director and senior fellow at the Brookings Institution's John Thornton China Center, for more. Dr. Chen Li, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. We are speaking at an important time, the two sessions, China's annual political season underway. Now, does China want the Cold War with the United States? when the U.S. is trying to be more confrontational than it ever been over the past few decades? Of course not. I, I, uh, but we should put it in the, the perspective. Uh, I think that when we talk about Cold War, uh, by definition, is a military and ideological confrontation uh, between um, U.S.-led bloc and with the former Soviet Union-led bloc. That was the definition of the Cold War in history. Now, of course, that, uh, uh, on one hand, I do not see that the United States and China uh, you know, uh, uh, have a fundamental different you know, ideology, such as that what happened in the Cold War, that either I uh, win, uh, defeat you, or you win, defeat uh, uh, me. So this kind of mm. zero-sum uh, game uh, thinking it's very, very destructive uh, during the Cold War. And, uh, but of course, that the, the two countries in, engage in uh, the military uh, 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 confrontation, even some uh, regional wars. Uh, that was the Cold War. Now, looking back, that, uh, I do not see policymakers in both countries, actually, uh, really wanted to have a war. But unfortunately, both countries are preparing uh, for that scenario. We, we do see mm. some kind of differences in the political and ideological, um, you know, in the uh, political system or ideological, ideological approach. So this is actually not just the uh, uh, United States. To a certain extent, uh, we enter a period with uh, social media, with the rise of nationalism in many parts of the world. We enter a period with a lot of uncertainty and uh, uh, particularly with AI, with, uh, you know, uh, with some new development. So this would be devastating, like Dr. Kissinger always remind us, um, his uh, you know, article April 3rd in Wall Street Journal, and uh, his uh, 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 speech in Beijing and early on in uh, 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 New York um, uh, last November, talk about the US and China on the fourth hill of a new Cold War. Uh, this would be devastating. Mm -hmm. We should do everything to prevent that happening. Well, Dr. Li, as you may know, uh, it's not in China's interest to have a Cold War, uh, whatever is the interpretation of the Cold War. Uh, it shouldn't be in the interest of the United States to do that either. Uh, and yet, uh, complicated factors are dragging the two countries further apart. That concern is becoming ever bigger. So, Dr. Li, now, do you see any chance is working together on the pandemic could be one of those chances uh, that the U.S. and China still have. Is it possible? Well, of course. Uh, but first of all, we do need to and just put this whole issue in a broad environment because international environment has profoundly changed even without uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, they involve some um, economic and geopolitical landscape change. Uh, this is also uh, related with uh, distributional issues in both domestic uh, economic disparity in both countries, but also in the international system in terms of uh, 
uh, uh, you create the winners and the losers after you know uh, decades long uh, uh, economic globalization, but also involve mm. technological uh, revolution and also social media. This is profoundly changed today's world. Now plus the coronavirus. Now we should put in the perspective both China and the United States were really devastated. You know, uh, uh, is de of course in a different period. If you look at the February and the early March, China actually uh, was the major country hit. Uh, uh, in later uh, uh, February, for example, uh, when China uh, reported 75,000 cases and uh, 2,200 uh, uh, deaths, at that time, the outside world only have some can confirm cases over just the 1,000. Only eight people died. But now, so it's a different picture. United States with 4% of world population, but with almost one third of infected, uh, reported infect infections, and also about 28 to 29 percent of deaths. Mm -hmm. Now, we do need to have empathy for both countries. But on the other hand, as a corporation, should be the same. Actually, the, uh, the, the, the you know, isolation or lockdown is just uh, the, the form to, um, to, uh, to, not to stop the, the spread of uh, virus. But ultimately, yeah. it's international cooperation. Um, it's a mutual uh, support, eventually, to find the, uh, the medicine and also uh, vaccine. Uh, but this will be international effort, not one country uh, right. just, uh, uh, will win out of that. I think that the US is in a very painful period to search for um, the, new, the new way to respond to the, the ever-changing environment. Uh, earlier, there was the quote-unquote the, the trade war. Now, already, uh, first round of trade negotiations, the deal, and before it's being implemented, we see the pandemic. During this process, we also see the intentional decoupling, technologically speaking, between the United States and China, mainly by the U.S. side. And at the same time, we see now Chinese companies listed on the U.S. stock exchanges might be having problems too. So one after another. It seems that Dr. Li, that whichever is the topic, uh, Washington, at least from this part of the world, would believe uh, always could pick it up and make it a topic against China. If not today, it might be tomorrow. Uh, in that sense, especially when this uh, feeling is quite uh, strong here in this part of the world. What can China really do uh, from the official side, in a way, to deal with the United States? Well, um, certainly that uh, um, you have some varied uh, concerns. Actually, the people in Washington, um, um, again, uh, American uh, foreign policy uh, is also under debate. There are a lot of critics, uh, uh, particularly by Democrats, but also by uh, many scholars. They think this kind of decoupling or contain China does not serve uh, the American interest. And recently, Bob Zalek, uh, former uh, Deputy Secretary of State, also uh, wrote an article in uh, you know, Wall Street Journal, uh, particularly mentioning that uh, the, the new Cold War, this kind of thing, will hurt the U.S., not help the U.S. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, important debates going on. So I hope that the Chinese mm -hmm. uh, audience should understand American, uh, uh, you know, America is not a monolithic entity, just like China is not a monolithic entity. There are different views, and it's very difficult yeah. to have a sound strategy. Now, the trade deal, certainly the certain aspects are still going on. For example, that uh, the, in terms of market excess, in terms of China's uh, financial opening, and also uh, in terms of intellectual property, powerful rights issue. But of course, some um, areas like agricultural products may, uh, may not uh, be move as fast as uh, uh, both sides agree early on because of the coronavirus. And then in other areas like energy, probably mm -hmm. because of the oil price, uh, it's really stuck. But you are right that in terms of technological front, you do see a very strong uh, move on the part of the United States in terms of, um, you know, uh, uh, the export control and uh, create a lot of hurdles for uh, Huawei. But even that, I think there's some uh, debate. Some American companies and uh, uh, have different views. They think that uh, uh, will will hurt the U.S. Um, economy, and also that the uh, uh, international community, the companies may may not necessarily uh, entirely implement because you do need to provide alternatives. 
but uh, the alternative is unclear for this uh, uh, company. But also there's a fair competition. Now I understand, we understand that because of Huawei, because of China's uh, technology uh, catch up, because of some of the, the issues that uh, uh, could undermine American security. So that's the response. But the how to respond, uh, whether to adopt a, a, a fair uh, policy, I mm -hmm. think that there will go some period. And, uh, at the moment, I certainly see there's a tensions, there's also unfortunate situation, which probably will hurt all of us. But we should be realistic. The technology competition, that right. issue, will be with us for uh, 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 you know, months and years to come. Mm. Uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Lee, before we go, an important question. Um, what do you consider, you know, when we think about the bigger issue uh, that China and U.S. together can handle and an opportunity can be created? Will that be about international cooperation? Will that be about economic policies? Will that be about health sector? Uh, you know, any of the possibility for, with a shining light, uh, do you see that, uh, realistically speaking? Yes. I think that uh, unfortunately we currently talk too much about the competition, and but the reality is the cooperation is even, even more important. Um, I, I do believe that both China and United States want to have uh, economic and financial stability in the world, and also uh, mm -hmm. believe that both China and United States do not have this kind of uh, devastating war, uh, the war uh, with no winner. I think this is a fundamental shared um, uh, interest, but unfortunately, some people uh, in Washington or maybe uh, elsewhere did not see that, uh, or do not see that. Now, uh, in terms of uh, uh, cooperation areas, uh, we talk about the international public good, uh, such as uh, uh, climate change, um, nuclear non-proliferation, and uh, 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 the, the drug traffic and the control. And uh, most importantly, at the moment, is the cooperation. Uh, dealing with the coronavirus and the other, uh, you know, uh, uh, contentious disease. I think that uh, mm -hmm. actually the uh, coronavirus uh, outbreak should be a wake-up call. Relatively speaking, I think people are, are still in the struggling to make sense of what happened. Medical community actually really emphasized cooperation based on my observation in both countries, particularly uh, uh, also that the, in China and the United States. So I think that we face a uh, the common enemy, which is the uh, coronavirus, mm. not China, not the United States. Most important things, we should work together. We should be restrained, both sides, as Dr. Kissinger's article in the last uh, month right. uh, reminded us that the restraint is very, very important. And uh, all of us should uh, mm. adjust to a new environment, but also should let the uh, rational view prevail to avoid devastating yes. uh, uh, consequences. We should take, Wonderful. both sides should take more responsibility to deal with the new challenge and to uh, uh, cooperate more rather than less. We hope reason will be the logic. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Cheng Li, for joining us. All the best. Thank you for having me. Dr. Cheng Li from the Brookings Institution in Washington, D.C. And that's all we have for this special program, Way Into Sessions, our special from inside the Great Hall of the People on the ongoing China's political season. I'm Tian Wei on behalf of the team here and also back in our Beijing studio. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.